in the tradition of three approaches to psychotherapy one with Dr. Carl Rogers, Dr. Frederick Pearls, and Dr. Albert Ellis. Three approaches to psychotherapy two with Dr. Carl Rogers, Dr. Everett Schostrom, and Dr. Arnold Lazarus. to present, in part one of this third series, Dr. Hans Strupp, distinguished professor of psychology, Vanderbilt University, and author of Psychotherapy and the Modification of Abnormal Behavior, and co-author of Psychotherapy in a New Key, a guide to time-limited dynamic psychotherapy. In part two, Dr. Donald Meichenbaum, professor of psychology, Waterloo University, and author of Cognitive Behavior Modification, an Integrative Approach, and Stress Inoculation Training. In Part 3, Dr. Aaron Beck, University Professor of Psychiatry at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine, and author of Anxiety Disorders and Phobias, and Cognitive Therapy of Depression. And now our host, Dr. Everett Schostrom. In this, our third series, we are again presenting three distinctly different approaches to psychotherapy. I leave it to Dr. Strupp, Dr. Meichenbaum, and Dr. Beck to present their theories and systems to you in their introductions and the therapy sessions that follow. But there are characteristics common to each of these three approaches that are perhaps as significant as their differences and that are important reflections of where we are today in this challenging profession. Among the major challenges we face in psychotherapy are most simply what strategy or techniques will help to solve or improve the problem of the patient. What evidence do we have that the strategy will probably be effective? If it is effective, how or why? And how long will the process take? Dr. Strupp, Dr. Meichenbaum, and Dr. Beck are leaders in addressing the challenges in psychotherapy through their extensive research and in their concerns with developing and evaluating briefer forms of psychotherapy. I want to thank these three men and their client, Richard, for allowing us to share in their work and experiences. Now, part one, Dr. Hans Strupp. The approach to psychotherapy which my collaborators and I have been developing at Vanderbilt University is based on an interpersonal model. We have found it useful to view a patient's problems as disturbances in interpersonal relationships. We also place a good deal of emphasis on understanding the transactions between patient and therapist in the here and now. In a nutshell, we feel that interpersonal experiences, typically those in early childhood, have made a person sick. The purpose of psychotherapy is to provide a new relationship that can make the person well or at least mitigate earlier damage. Together with Freud, I see psychotherapy as a form of education or after education or in Alexander's phrase, as a corrective emotional experience. In short, therapy involves learning, and we now have to ask, how does it work, and how does it come about? I think it can happen in two major ways. First, the therapist attempts to, atten uh, to create a good human relationship and to understand the patient's inner world. This is done through communication of interest, through caring, through respect, and above all, through empathic listening. The patient must come to feel secure and free to express himself or herself. Second, while a good empathic relationship seems to be a major healing factor in all forms of psychotherapy, it is often not enough. 
The problem is precisely that the patient cannot take proper advantage of what a good human relationship has to offer. This is so because as a result of hurtful experiences in early childhood, patients have developed maladaptive patterns of behavior which in adult life create serious obstacles in their relationships. Freud made the revolutionary discovery that people tend to transfer feelings, attitudes, and behaviors from the past to the present and to reenact with significant people in their current life scenarios that are rooted in troublesome interpersonal relationships that stem from the past. For example, a patient may relate to the therapist as a powerful parent figure and assume the role of a weak and dependent child. In this, and in many other ways, patients rigidly cling to the past and they do so by what I call cyclical maladaptive patterns. A major task for the therapist is one, to identify one of these patterns in the patient's life. Second, to bring it to the patient's attention. And third, to help the patient explore the ramifications in his or her current life. While such a maladaptive pattern may become apparent already in a first interview, it may take quite some time before it can be worked through and therapeutic change can occur. The therapist can be helpful in this because he or she is both a participant and an observer in what transpires in the patient-therapist relationship. As an observer, the therapist recurrently steps outside and comments on what transpires in the interaction. The therapist's own emotional reactions to the patient can also be of great value in therapy. They can also be at times a great hindrance. In sum, therapy involves learning, learning that is cognitive learning and learning that's experiential learning. That is, the patient learns to use the context of a good relationship with a sympathetic and empathic listener to acquire new or different patterns of thinking, feeling, and acting. Thank you. Hello, Richard. I'm Hans Strupp. I'd like to ask you what brings you here and how I might be of help to you. I just went through a divorce that uh, I did not want. Uh, my wife divorced me, uh, and uh, I felt that uh, we could, should continue on as going through therapy. And uh, I'm having a very difficult time getting over the loss of my wife, the, lice, uh, the loss of our family, and also uh, selling of the home. Mm -hmm. I'm quite devastated by it all. Can you fill me in a little bit about uh, how this divorce came about? Uh, we were married about five years ago and we were happy for the first two years and then uh, we just started drifting apart uh, through as I look back at it now it was through lack of communications I feel was the most part of it uh, we would sit there at the dinner table and uh, just make small talk and talk about uh, immaterial things and we just drifted uh, further and further apart and and uh, we we both held the anger inside of us. We were angry at each other. We did not communicate at all. And we just drifted further and further apart. And then at that point in time, after we were married for about three years, we did uh, seek out some counseling. Mm -hmm. Did that accomplish anything? Well, what did it accomplish? Uh, the counseling <coughs> at that time uh, helped us look at each other. Uh, or we looked at ourselves, not at each other. We looked at ourselves. And I believe that both my wife and I are better people for going to this counseling. 
but this was individual therapy. Yes, it was individual therapy. We did not go together. Did you see the same therapist? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we continued to go individually. And uh, then my wife came to me one day, and she said that she thought it would be a good idea if we separated for like six months or a year, and I would stay in the house and keep the house. And I agreed to that. I thought it was a good idea because we were just drifting further and further apart. And she moved out, took, a, uh, took an apartment, and uh, about four months later, we continued to go to therapy, and about four months later, uh, she came back to me and said that she would never be coming home again and that she wanted me to sell the house and uh, that uh, she felt it was completely over between us. Mm -hmm. So I was quite devastated by this because I did not want this divorce. And I put the house up for sale. It's sold within two weeks and we closed, it, closed escrow within uh, six weeks and I took an apartment and uh, hoping that, because uh, the house was quite a financial burden on us. It took two incomes to keep it going. And I moved into an apartment, and uh, I would, then I would call my wife up and see if she wanted to date, or we could continue on the therapy, but I wanted to save the marriage. And then uh, after I'd been in my apartment for about 30 days, she called me up and said that uh, she'd filed for divorce. What reason did she give for moving out? We just weren't getting on. We just weren't getting along. That was all. There, there okay. were no. What, what were, what precisely happened, or in what way did you not get along? We didn't communicate. This is. Yeah, you this said is, that at the beginning. This that, is, that was a problem from the beginning. Yes, and it still is to this day. Right now, it's it's still mm -hmm. to this day. We just did not communicate. Uh, we would be sitting at the dinner table. And I would ask my, my wife, I'd be sitting there, and I, would, and I could see she was angry. She was sulking. I, I would say, what's the matter? And she would say, nothing. Well, me being a nitwit at that time at myself, I'd say, oh, okay, nothing's fine. So I would just drop it. I wouldn't pursue it. And then we would go to bed and get up the next morning and, and re, re, uh, repeat the whole scene all over again. And we just absolutely did not communicate and we just kept drifting further and further apart. We, we never discussed our problems whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, our lovemaking started to fall off and it was just lack of communication is all it was. We just, even uh, possibly uh, she would have filed for divorce anyway if, uh, if we, even if we would have communicated. But uh, I, I feel so empty inside because we never really expressed ourselves to each other. When you say that uh, she would sit at the breakfast table, table and sulk, uh, something must have happened the night before or the day before or the moment before. Um, <clears throat> there must have been some things that you did that she reacted to or some things uh, that uh, were, were going on between the two of you that the other reacted in in very adverse ways. What, what uh, comes to mind about that? Okay, I believe part of it was that my wife did not think I was well educated enough for at that time for this, the uh, social people that we were running around with at that time, I don't think she thought I was well educated enough. I am not a uh, college graduate. Uh, she was? No, she is not, but she has high ideas for herself. And uh, I think that she felt that uh, these groups that, that we were socializing with at the time, uh, she, a lot of times I felt that she was very embarrassed. Uh, she tried to protect me because I just wasn't an outgoing, vibrant pillar of the community type. I also think another thing that bothered her was that she made more money than I did. And I think that bothered her considerably. Hmm. Did it bother you? Somewhat. It was, it was not overpowering to me because I, I felt that our love was holding us together. It was not a big material thing to me at that time. Yeah, I meant to ask you that uh, when you first met her, when you were first married, I assume that happened fairly soon thereafter? Or We went together about two years. I see. There was a time when 
you were getting along pretty well. And these problems in communication, as you describe them, did not occur, or they were. Yes. Uh, when, when we first met, we had a, I guess, a, a, a simple uh, male-female relationship. Uh, we were infatuated with, uh, with each other. I thought she was the most wonderful person in the world. She was attracted to me because I was physically good-looking. And at that point in my, in my life, I did have, uh, I was comfortable financially. And uh, we, at the, we did seem to have a lot of things in common when we did get married. Mm -hmm. So there was a good understanding and the relationship was uh, harmonious? Yes, initially, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my wedding day was the happiest day of my life. Mm -hmm. You had been married before? No, this was my first marriage. Before, had she been married before? Yes. I see, and there, there were some children? Uh, my wife has uh, four children. She has four children. Well, getting back uh, to the difficulties that eventually led to the divorce, I, I would like to pursue a little more the uh, ideas that you were presenting about um, her feeling that you somehow didn't measure up to her expectations. Um, how, how did you feel about that? Uh, it made me feel very inadequate. I, uh, I, uh, when we would go out to, we went, used to go to a lot of black tie affairs and uh, and she would constantly cut in on my conversations, uh, whether she was correcting me or uh, she had something to contribute. It didn't make any difference. She would cut in. Mm -hmm. uh, I can remember one time when we went to a, a nice affair, and there were about uh, four couples sitting at the table, and the lady ex uh, ne sitting next to me ex expressed a political opinion, and I disagreed with it. So I expressed my political opinion, and then after, which I made sure everyone at the table heard me, and uh, after it was all over, my wife announced to the uh, table that I always uh, played the devil's advocate, which I wanted to punch her right in the mouth for saying that. Mm -hmm. So you felt she was putting you down and you were angry? Yes. So how did that result in her sulking in the morning and saying, when you questioned what's going on, you, she would say nothing. I, as I reflect back on it now, I'm sure that uh, she was angry with me because I didn't present the perfect image at the dinner table the previous night, so it carried over into the morning, and rather than us sitting down and discussing it mm -hmm. and saying, what the heck is going on here, she wouldn't say anything, and I, and I would just, well, well, okay, I'll let it go. I wouldn't say anything, and then we would just... And you would get angry, and she would be angry. Yes, and uh, we just didn't say anything mm -hmm. about it. I, we were just both hoping, I guess, that it would just go away by itself. It didn't? No. What happened instead? We drifted further and further and further apart. The, the touching, the kissing, the holding, the caressing, uh, the intimate looks, they weren't there anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's when finally it got to the point, uh, I, I could see there was a problem, but, but never, never going to therapy before, never reading any self-improvement books, uh, always uh, just being basically interested in material things, I really didn't know how to handle it. I just didn't know what to do. Did you discuss these um, problems, this estrangement that was occurring between the two of you? I didn't get the impression, at least until the time that you went to see a counselor. Did you discuss these things at all? If there was any discussion at all, it was very, very limited. She wrote me uh, two or three, this is while we're still married, living together. Yes. She wrote me two or three letters from time to time and, uh, and would express her feelings, partially express her feelings. And, and but I would read the letters, and then we would we would discuss them superficially. But there was never. What did she say in those letters? Yeah. Uh, she would be angry. She was angry at herself for what she did. Um, you mean to criticize you? Or? Yes. She would be angry at herself for what she did, and she would feel bad. 
And so I took it as an apology, and I would go to her and I'd say, gee, everything is, that's fine, I'm glad you wrote the letter. And, and we, would, we would talk about the letters superficially, but, but we never got to the real meat of the problem. Mm -hmm. Whose idea was it to seek uh, professional help? My wife's. And you went along? She, she felt that that would be helpful to uh, improve the marital relation. Yes, she went, when she first started going to the counselors, I think she went like three or four months. And she told me, I, I didn't even get the impact of the whole thing. You know, I, I almost had, like, had my head buried in the sand almost. Uh, she told me she's going to a counselor. Oh, okay, fine, great. Good, you need it. And, and uh, so uh, after about, she went to the counselor for like three or four months, and then she says, I want you to start going too. And I could see our relationship was just absolutely deteriorating. And so I said, fine, I'll go. I, I always referred to it as one flew over the cuckoo's nest because I was not crazy about therapy whatsoever at that point in my life. And I started going, and I could, uh, I, I could see the benefits that I was receiving from this. And I felt that if my wife was receiving as many benefits as I was, uh, we were going to pull this marriage back together again. Mm -hmm. Were you aware of any things that you might have been doing to aggravate the situation or uh, create in part the problems that, that arose? That is, were you doing might you be, obviously you no? Know, you couldn't do much about the income. Uh, you couldn't do much about the education. Somehow or other, she was disappointed in you. Uh, but might there have been something? You said you you kind of rejected the idea of seeking help. Um, might there have been other things that uh, um, somehow made it worse? Uh, she complained to me several times that I was not uh, attentive enough to her. I did not caress her. I did not hold her enough. Uh, we did not make love enough times. Uh, she, she wanted more physical attractions. Mm -hmm. You said earlier you were rather uh, strongly in love with her. You, there was a strong attraction there. That, that had worn off? or you, Initially, you lost... yes. Initially, the, when we dated, and then, the, say, like the first two years of the marriage. And then we started drifting apart after that. Mm -hmm. So you felt, basically, that she was somehow disappointed in you, or dissatisfied, or displeased, or in yes. one way or another. And uh, were you asking yourself questions as to what you might have been contributing to this, or were con continuing to contribute to this? At, at that time, when I first started noticing uh, negative thoughts, my own negative thoughts towards my wife, um, I was telling myself that it was her fault. Yes. It's, it's not me, it's her. And when... Uh, the negative thoughts were what? She's just a bitch. Uh -huh. She you, screwed up. You were getting very angry at her. Yes. And uh, I was, when she, when she would criticize me, rather than calling it on her and saying, well, hey, you know, that's your opinion. Don't, if you want to express your opinion, fine, but that's not the way I see it. Rather, rather than discussing it and expressing your opinions, my attitude was, well, I'm going to get even with her. I'm going to get back at her. She, she criticized me at the dinner table one night. Well, I'm going to get her. The next Saturday night, I'm going to get her. I'm going to put her in her place. Have you had similar kinds of relationships in which uh, you were angry or your partner was somehow dissatisfied, or was this the first time this ever happened in your life? Uh, up until I was married uh, to, to my ex-wife, uh, women were just more or less sex objects to me. I was, I was never really interested in getting married. They were just mm -hmm. dates, somebody for Saturday night. Uh, I never, I used, to, I would uh, go with a girl for two, three, four years until they started hammering me about getting married, and I, I wanted no part of it mm -hmm. until I met. Uh, until I, I mean, met closeness, intimacy, other than physical, was not much of an issue. N no, 
you weren't looking for it and you, you, it didn't seem to be important to you. Am no. I putting words in your mouth? No, no, no. not at all. Yeah. Uh, it, I knew there was something missing. All, say I dated for like uh, 20 years or whatever it was, I, I knew there was something missing. But I just never could reach down inside of myself and, and, and come to say, hey, I love you. Mm -hmm. it, it was very difficult for me. So this was really the first time that uh, while you were married, you lived close on close range with, uh, with a woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, that brought about these problems that have to do it seems to me with uh, difficulties in, in intimate relationships and uh, where you felt uh, somehow put down uh, or in, in certain ways your partner was disappointed in you or, or there was a lot of angry in that change. I mean, there, there clearly was something basically wrong in the relationship that needed I think to be worked out, yes. and uh, um, it's. I think it's also not uh, unimportant that uh, you had a number of sort of fleeting, shall we say, relationships or, or impermanent relationships. You were how old when you got married? Forty-two. Uh huh. And had you ever uh, wore? Uh, uh, been wondering why you hadn't married sooner, or did this just not? Uh... Uh, well, for one thing, I was looking for the perfect woman. I see. She had, had the perfect personality and the perfect body, and uh, they're hard to find. Yes, I'm going to start looking again, though. But I'm not going to take 25 years to find one. Uh, and uh, I finally come to realize that I put my expectations way too high. I've got to. I had to look at myself and see what mm. what do what do I have to offer. When Connie and I got married, I thought she was the most, uh, the, the, the most uh, perfect woman in the entire world. Mm -hmm. But apparently she had certain <coughs> expectations of you, too, that you didn't meet. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it may have been a situation where both of you had very high expectations of the other, yes. and you couldn't fulfill no. them uh, because both of you were looking for perhaps uh, the kind of people that uh, don't exist yes. or the kind of relationship that doesn't exist and you were sort of brought down hard to, to reality, uh, finding out that, that you had shortcomings, that y she had shortcomings and uh, you somehow were, weren't able to, to come to terms with those. Uh, several months ago, I eluded this to the counselor, I, 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 when I went in to see him one day, I said, you know, I feel sorry for Connie. I mean, I was filled with anger and hatred at this time. I mean, I was really mad at her. But I could still bring to myself, you know, I feel sorry for Connie because I think she's looking, possibly looking for the man that, is, that does not exist, the man that's, that's perfect. And mm -hmm. I just don't think she'll ever but find it. But by the it. same token, you're also looking for the woman that perhaps doesn't exist. Yeah. Well. You know, the next you, Saturday night, you never know what happens. Anyway. You, you're not quite convinced that that's uh, <laughs> uh, impossible, that, that maybe you need to examine some things there about, uh, uh, well, whether the kind of partner you're looking for can be, can be found. Interestingly, too, that at first, uh, your wife was that ideal person, but then... Uh, things went downhill and apparently they went downhill also as far as she was concerned she felt dissatisfied and yes. you weren't meeting her needs and she felt uh, uh, you know the other way around too that mm -hmm. is you weren't meeting each, each other's each other's needs well I've been asking you a lot of questions are there any questions you want to ask me how are the Commodores going to do in football next year <laughs> I, uh, I wasn't ready for that. I have a lot of questions to ask you. Uh, 
where where do where do I go from at this point in my life? Um, how do I get started? I want to get started. How do I get started again? I'm down, I'm depressed from the from the divorce. Uh, I don't have a woman in my life. My uh, my uh, uh, I feel that uh, my job is beneath me as as what I'm doing right now. I just I should have better. I should have a better job. I live in a crummy little apartment which I hate. I met my I I want a house. I want I want all the things that I had before, and and where do I get started? How do I get doing this? Uh, you lost some of your, you lost a job, and you lost. I, uh, I've, I've had uh, three or four jobs last year, mm -hmm. and we sold the house. You know, I'm starting all over again. What do you attribute these? What did this? How did this come about? The job loss. The uh... Uh, one of them, I was laid off. I knew it was coming, and I got laid off on that one. Uh, one of them, I was. I only had it for two months, and I got fired. Uh, Did I, you get angry on the job, or you get into conflicts with people on the job? Well, that was a matter of opinion. I put my fist through the wall one time, but I thought it was just showing my expression. They they, they took it as being angry. Uh, the, the woman that I worked with, I was in real estate at the time, and there was two of us, we were in new home sales, and there were two of us in the sales office. And uh, this woman and I, uh, she was quite, uh, quite vocal, just a loud mouth. She, she was a bitch, as a matter of fact, that's all she was. And uh, we worked together for a while, and... Uh, you used that term to describe your wife, too. Yes, well, I could just about use it to describe all women right now, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we got along okay for a while. Uh, I did put my fist through the wall one time, one day in the sales office, but it was an accident. Mm -hmm. Are you pretty uh, explosive in, in your dealings with people in general? Uh, I, I was at that time. I was very depressed, very angry, and uh, very upset. Just And to work with this particular woman, who I, to this day, I still don't like her. She's Mm -hmm. not a good person and uh, so she went finally went to the sales manager and uh, behind my she never this is the thing that really irritates me she never discussed with me our problem she never came to me once I went to her two or three times uh, which I was proud of myself at the time because I never could do this with my wife I went to her two or three times and I, I could see there's a problem I said you know there's a real problem here let's talk it out and uh, she would, she was really rude with me. She wouldn't talk about it. She was uh, uncommunicative. And I said, you know, then I said to myself, well, that's your problem, man. You're screwed up. And uh, so anyway, we started, we started, this gal that I was working with, we started drifting further and further apart. And uh, then uh, she went to the salesman. Without ever discussing anything with me, she went to the sales manager and told him that uh, I'd put my fist to the wall and uh, I was an SOB to work with and so forth and so on. And he called me in and fired me. And I was very unhappy about that. That, that was one of the jobs I had. Mm. Uh, well, I certainly understand you've had a lot of disappointments in, in your recent life in particular. And uh, earlier on, too, or has this... Uh, yes. You, you nod your head. Yes, I believe uh, my problem started from my childhood. Hmm. Well, I, uh, I think that would be valuable to go into also because, you know, it did, this didn't start yesterday. No. And it didn't start the day before. Mm -hmm. And it's not likely to, you know, terminate tomorrow. I, I think it would be very helpful to you to find a therapist to work with and examine what the things are that you might be contributing to or that lead to the kinds of difficulties that you have found yourself in. And I think that um, this is a good time. I think that the, the fact that you uh, are at a point that you are uncom uncomfortable, that you are feeling kind of crummy about yourself and, and the world uh, would be a good time to, to take up uh, this unfinished business and and look at, at the totality of your life. It may take some time to do that, and I think that it can be done and there's help available. And uh, I realize that you know, financial considerations play a part, but I 
certainly would encourage you to find a competent therapist and, and, and stick with it, uh, I have a sense you, you probably would. Yes, I, uh, now that uh, I've finally been introduced to therapy, uh, I am very high on it and uh, I am irritated at myself that I never, uh, never received some type of counseling or therapy when I, when I was in a young person in my 20s when I really needed it the most at that point in time rather than all my education or night school or whatever I've, whatever I've done in my life I've always leaned towards uh, how can I make more money I read uh, business magazines and uh, when I went to night school it was strictly related to business and, in and increase my income uh, half of that time should have been devoted to uh, self-improvement and therapy mm -hmm. uh, our time unfortunately is running short but uh, I'm curious, uh, is there any one thing you said, it started from day one, is there any one thing in, in your childhood or growing up that you attribute um, your major difficulties to, and anything in particular that come to mind? Uh, the lack of affection and love as a child, and also that and being, alone, and being an only child. Mm -hmm. uh, lack of affection from? From my mother and, and father. Both parents? Yes. Mm -hmm. Lack of affection, and then when I, re when I received no love and affection, and being an only child, I, I didn't have anyone to talk to. I spent an awful lot of time by myself as a child because they they were alcoholics, and I spent an both parents were alcoholics. Yes, mm -hmm. I spent an awful lot of time by myself. I I, I had a dog and a teddy bear, and that was it. And Do you have so, any, any friends? Uh, even as a youngster, I had a difficult time making friends because at that time, uh, even, even as a child, I think I had a lot of anger in me mm -hmm. and very few friends. But uh, at that, I, I learned, uh, I didn't learn. I got off on the wrong foot in life by not communicating as a child and it just carried over as the years went by. Mm -hmm. I think you have certainly some pretty good understanding of some of the history and uh, is this something that was occurring in therapy or that was that you arrived at in therapy? Yes, these just about everything that that I know of therapy is what I've learned in the last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Thank you for coming in. Thank and you. I enjoyed talking to you. Wish you lots of luck. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'd like to comment briefly on the interview with Richard uh, that was just completed. I'd like to make a few comments about this man and his impression that he made on me first. It's pretty apparent that here we're dealing with a very angry and a very depressed and a rather hostile man. We can also understand something about his recent disappointment, his wife having left him. Uh, the uh, divorce and uh, his feeling of uh, being rather abandoned and alone. It was difficult for me to uh, get a clear picture of what this man's recurrent patterns, maladaptive patterns are. Uh, we got a glimpse of that toward the very end of the interview when he uh, talked a little bit about his deprived childhood, the lack of affection and tenderness and closeness in his parental home. And I do believe that where, that's where his difficulty certainly originated from. I dwelled a good deal on the uh, relationship with his wife because of my uh, conviction that uh, in their personal relationships are the area that need to be explored and that's why I spend a good deal of time on that. I didn't get a very clear picture of uh, what happened in this marriage except that uh, here are two people, probably both of them rather self-oriented, rather narcissistic and who uh, were clashing because they we're not capable of uh, intimacy. And I think that that's this man's basic problem. He is not capable and has not been capable throughout his life of intimate uh, 
relationships of closeness, a fear of closeness, no doubt, but also a difficulty that results from that. So here we have a man, I think, who is basically rather empty, uh, who uh, uh, displays a certain bravado, who uh, displays the role of uh, hail fellow, well met, but it is uh, superficial. Complicating also are uh, this man's uh, volatility, his tendency to be explosive, and uh, his search for the ideal mate, the ideal companion. And he sees himself as kind of a, a person who's uh, uh, concerned quite a bit with show, and he's looking for this ideal object. And he's so, so he's going to be disappointed as life goes on. I see him uh, at this time in his life, in his 40s, as someone who's coming up against a crisis. There are recurrent disappointments, and they are rooted in his character, uh, his whole history. He has never been able to form a close, intimate relationship with a woman, or perhaps with anyone. Uh, the question might be asked, how would I deal with this man in therapy if he were to see me in therapy? And there again, I did not get a very clear indication of what this man's maladaptive patterns are. I do believe that over a six-month period, perhaps in once-a-week interviews, and he seems to be motivated, quite a bit could be accomplished in exploring what his interpersonal difficulties are, what he does, what he is looking for that leads to disappointments, and uh, what uh, might be done to help him to uh, form more uh, satisfying, harmonious relationships with uh, other people. But I see this as a rather long drawn out and a rather protracted uh, undertaking. The very fact that I was not able to get a very clear picture, a very succinct picture, would suggest, to me at least, that we're dealing with a rather deep-seated, long-standing problem, which often is referred to as narcissistic uh, personality disorder. Uh, he is simply unable to relate to people in a, except in a very superficial uh, sort of way. I uh, felt that uh, any further exploration would take us into therapy, and I would certainly want to learn more about this man's past, his interpersonal relationships in the past that proved disappointing. The most recent one, certainly, with his wife, who left him in the recent past, is an area where we need to deal with uh, what he did to her what she did to him, what his expectations are of her, what her expectations are of him. And I think it was quite apparent how disappointed both were. They apparently were both people not capable of close relationships. But it's the area of disturbed in their personal relationships and the recurrent patterns, the maladaptive patterns, that are of primary interest to me in working with a person like that uh, in psychotherapy. I don't think he is an ideal candidate for short-term therapy or perhaps for any kind of psychotherapy. There is the question of his impulsiveness and uh, his uh, anger and the question of how long he would stay in therapy if he were to get into therapy. But at the same time, I think there is also a lot to be said on the positive side that would suggest that uh, he might make progress and that uh, psychotherapy definitely could help him and I would certainly want to give it a try. As for my own reactions, which I find uh, always interesting, I really didn't come to any clear feeling. On the one hand, uh, I felt empathic with his difficulties and at the same time, perhaps partly because of his basically narcissistic orientation, I did not feel very close or could not empathize with him very well, as I don't think he was very empathic with me. So there's a kind of superficiality that beclouds this inner emptiness 
that the man is suffering from. Yeah.